Today we're visiting with fisheries biologist Todd Caspers. Todd manages the Devil's Lake Complex and the Red River. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Welcome to the program, Todd. Thanks, Mike. Todd, you manage the, the Devil's Lake Complex, which includes Lake Irvine and Stump Lake, and then manage the Red River. How are water levels looking in the Devil's Lake Complex? Well, we're a little bit lower than we've been for quite a while. Since the high in 2011, we're down seven feet or more since then, and that's causing some kind of boat ramp issues. They're, we're getting to where we have to chase the boat ramps down instead of up, as we did in the past. But there's some some snow in the watershed this, this year, so hopefully we get some runoff and bring things up a little bit to where the boat ramps aren't really a concern for the time being. Okay, let's move into fish populations uh, in the Devil's Lake Complex. Let's start out with walleyes. Walleye should be doing pretty well this year. The fishing opportunity should be pretty good. We have better numbers of those kind of 10 to 15 inch walleye, again, those kind of prime keeper size fish that the anglers like. And there's smaller fish too, and some bigger fish as well, like normal. Okay, how about Stump Lake? Um, Stump Lake for walleye, again, should be pretty good. There's not as many of those smaller fish below about 15 inches, but the fish above 15 inches are essentially around average or above average even, so fishing opportunities should be good there too. Okay, and Lake Irvine. And Lake Irvine, again, is kind of like broken record. Um, walleye opportunities should be good up there too. Their numbers are around average or so, especially for those kind of 15 to 20 inch fish that the anglers like. Okay, let's move into our state fish on those three. Um, yeah, Northern Pike on Devil's Lake. Opportunities are not as good as they've been in the past just because the population isn't as strong. I don't think we've had good natural recruitment for a while, so there's less less adult fish around than there had been in the past. Of course, in the past, sometimes they're a little bit too abundant if you talk to some anglers, but yeah, right now, you know, opportunities are still good, I think, but not as good as in the past. How about Northern Pike on Stump Lake and Lake Irvine? Um, Stump Lake is not as good as it's been in the past, kind of like Devil's Lake. I don't think we've had much recruitment over there for a little while, but there's still pike out there and their average size is pretty good. A lot of those kind of 28 inch plus size fish, so they're a little better size. And Lake Irvine, pike are still doing pretty well in Lake Irvine. Their numbers are a little above average in there still. Um, anglers actually probably shouldn't be shy about keeping a you know, limit of pike from Lake Irvine because they tend to be a little bit too abundant in there actually. Okay, how about white bass? Um, white bass in Devil's Lake should still be doing pretty well. Um, there's not as many as there had been, but we're still kind of riding a, a high from what it had been. The 2015 year class is not as abundant as they were, but there's still pretty good numbers of them. And they're getting pretty good size now too. They're probably gonna be a lot of those 15 to 17 inch white bass. So the average size is really good. Okay, how about white bass on Lake Irvine or uh, Stump Lake? Uh, white bass are not really very prevalent in Lake Irvine. Okay. They're out there, but we just never see a whole lot of them. But when you do see them, they tend to be pretty good sized fish. Um, and Stump Lake, numbers are pretty good out there as well. We had good recruitment in that 2015 year class on Stump as well as we did on Devils. So there's still a fair amount of those you know, good sized white bass, say, you know, 16 to 18 inches on stump. They're a little bit bigger in stump than they are in Devil's Lake, but okay. should be good, pretty good numbers of those still. Todd, let's move on to the Red River. Let's talk about the bread and butter fish of the Red River, the catfish. Yeah, I mean, like you just mentioned, they're kind of the bread and butter fish of the Red River is the channel catfish. It's one of the probably better channel catfish fisheries in North America in terms of you can catch a trophy sized channel cat about anywhere. I mean, it's not like they're everywhere, but you know, opportunities for a 20 pound plus catfish exist. And ang sure. Yeah, and anglers can shore fish for catfish. I mean, it's Yeah, you don't need a lot of equipment to fish for catfish, just a, you know, a pretty good size rod and reel. It's, it, they tend to be pretty good sized fish that can fight pretty hard. So you need some little bit heavier equipment than normal, but nothing really fancy. Okay, let's move on to walleye in the Red River. Walleye opportunities should still be pretty good. Um, and there's, again, some really nice trophy-sized walleye in the red as well, so you never know what you might catch. 
taught any other fish species in the Red River. Yeah, we have you know pretty good populations of sauger. They tend to be a little more abundant as you go north on the Red River. And then, I mean, there's some pike as well too, but not a lot of them necessarily compared to the other fish. And then further upstream, say around Wapakson area, there's some opportunities for smallmouth bass as well. Okay, any projects this year, either on Devil's Lake Complex or the Red River? Um, nothing really on Devil's Lake this year, but uh, the Red River, we're gonna be teaming up with Minnesota and South Dakota and Manitoba, you know, basically all the entities that um, border the Red River as we all kind of co-manage that fishery. Um, there's going to be um, fish population sampling going on this year. Minnesota is largely in charge of that. And then the Creel Survey, you know, the Angler Survey is going to be going on this summer on the Red River. And North Dakota is going to be basically in charge of that survey this time around. Todd, and if you do run into a Creel clerk, make sure to take a few minutes to answer those questions because it's crucial information for you guys managing the Red River. Yeah, I, just like you mentioned, it provides great information for us to manage the fishery based on information. Um, and something a little different than normal is you may not even really run into a Creo clerk. We're going to be experimenting with a, like an electronic survey aspect of the survey this time around. The Creo clerks will leave um, you know, a little card, either give that to shore anglers to kind of complete the information from the survey, or also leave it on them. Um, boat anglers vehicles um, to get information from them. It'll be an online survey so you just follow the, the prompts on the card basically and that'll route you to a um, online survey that the Minnesota DNR is largely handling because they're also doing a creel survey on the Minnesota River so it's kind of in com combination with that. Okay, so things in the Devil's Lake Complex and the Red River look promising for this summer. Yeah, it should be you know a good summer of fishing for for anglers. So, a lot of great information, Todd. Thank you. Thank you.